एवरी ऑन वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल आई होप यू गाइज आर डूइंग एक्सट्रीमली वेल सो इन दिस वीडियो वेगिंग टू सॉल्व शॉर्टेस्ट डिस्टेंस इन अ बाइनरी मेज ना ये गिवन एन एन क्रॉस ए मैट्रिक्स वेर ईच एलिमेंट कैन इधर बी जीरो और अ वन यू नीड टू फाइंड द शॉर्टेस्ट डिस्टेंस बिटवीन अ गिवन सोर्स टू अ डेस्टिनेशन सोर्स सॉरी डेस्टिनेशन सेल द पाथ कैन ओनली बी क्रिएटेड आउट ऑफ अ सेल if its value is 1 that means you can only move through once now if a path is not possible between a source and a destination you need to return minus 1 so imagine uh, this is the given cell to you and you have 1 1 0 0 0 0s and this cell being filled with 1s and 0s now being said that the source is 0 comma 1 which means this is the particular source i can say this is the particular source and i've been said that the destination is 2 comma 2 which is going to be this portion so if i mark this is going to be my destination now what they are asking you is from here you have to go here what is the minimum path or minimum like shortest path that you can figure out now remember uh, they haven't mentioned if they do not mention anything then always remember from one cell to the other cell the distance taken will be 1 that means if you are moving from one cell to the other cell the distance taken will always be one so now you must be thinking if we have to figure out the shortest path which kind of movements are allowed so over here you can only move in four directions it is not mentioned in the question i'll ask the problem setter to edit it and add it up so you can move it uh, move in four directions so assume you are standing here you can move here which will take one one more then you can move down then you can move down then you can move here which means it is going to take you five steps yes because a cell to another cell takes one step so this is going to be five steps but is this the shortest one no you can also move in this direction one two and then three so i can see if i move in something like this i get the shortest distance yes i get the shortest distance if it was eight directions you could have directly moved here and it would have been two steps but since the question clearly states you can move in four directions it will be like here 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 and then here and that is how you can easily reach this from source to destination now if the question would have allowed you eight directions then you would have gone like this and then this so it would have been two steps but since it does not allows you all the directions you have to move something like this and this which will end up taking you three steps and this is the minimal that you can do there can be multiple other paths as well but we are over here to figure out the shortest path from a given source to a destination so whenever there is a question of shortest path you always start thinking of which algorithms do you know about shortest path and one of the algorithms that you know is of the dijkstra's algorithm that we have learned in the previous video so if you haven't seen the previous video go back and watch it so you have learned the dijkstra's algorithm now if you remember the dijkstra could be applied using the priority queue and the set data structure okay now we will be solving this using the dijkstra's algorithm as of now and then i'll be telling you should we use a priority queue or can a queue suffice or not i will be telling you all about that in this particular video so make sure you watch the video till the end so that your concept is clear enough so if you remember the dijkstra's algorithm what did it state it always stated that you need to take a priority queue remember so what i'll do is i'll take a priority queue and a distance array so over here we have a 2d array so the distance array this time can be something similar to a 2d array of the same size which is going to store all the distances so the initial configuration will contain a priority queue and a 2d array which is going to store all the distances so let's create the initial configuration so this is how the initial configuration will look where we have a priority queue which is going to store the distance at the first and then the coordinates of the node which is over here the row and the column and over here we have the distance array which is going to mark zero on the source because this is the source and we know if you are traveling from source to source the distance taken will be zero and everything else will be marked as infinity which means you have not reached at that place now what is the initial configuration to start off with it's very simple whatever is the source which is over here 0 comma 1 you take 0 comma 1 and with the distance 0 you can put that into your priority queue yes and 
After this, you will start your Dijkstra's algorithm, which is very simple. You always take out the topmost element and you say, okay, to reach 0, 0,1 cell, I'm taking a distance of 0. And you know 0, 0,1 can either go to the top because we are allowed four direction. One is to the top, one is to the right, one is to the bottom, one is to the left. So if I try to go to the top, it's not possible because it's not a valid cell. I can go, uh, I can try to go to the right, which will mean there is a one. Yes, there is a one. And which cell is, is it? 0, comma 2. So I can go to the right, which means 0, comma 2. And I'll take another plus one, which will make the total distance to be one, which will make the total distance to be one. So thereby, what I can say is I can take this and put it into the priority queue because this was infinity before and I got a better version, which is one. So take one, comma, 0, 2 and put it into the priority queue. Very straightforward. Now, can you go to the bottom? Yes, you can go to the bottom as well because the bottom has a 1 and it's infinity. So, if you just add a plus 1, the bottom one is 1, 1 and the distance taken will be 1 again. So, you can say 1, 1, 1 is what you'll add it into the priority queue and you'll update the matrix as well. Can you go to the left? Yes. Now, can it go to the left? Yes, it can go to the left, which is 0, 0. And it will end up taking a distance of one. If you see the left is here, it can go over here and it is, it was previously infinite. So I'll update it to one and I'll say it can go to the left with one comma zero comma zero and I'll update it. So I've traversed to all the adjacent nodes. So what I'll do is I'll just omit this off. Now, here comes a point of observation. You started with a cell zero. You started with a cell zero and then you took plus one, plus one plus one on all the corresponding adjacent nodes. So you reached everyone with a distance of one. Why did we use priority queue in Dijkstra? I've already made a video on that. Please go back and watch it. The reason we used priority queue in Dijkstra was because we wanted the minimal of them. We wanted the minimal of them. But if you carefully observe, everyone is having the same distance. So do we need a priority queue? No. Why? Because even if you take this guy for the next step, so that means it will have a distance of one and again it will travel to its adjacent, again it will travel to its adjacent, again to its adjacent, again to its adjacent and everyone will be at a distance of two. Everyone will be at a distance of two and they will pile up something like this in the priority queue. And in the next step, there will be three, 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 three. So do you need a priority? What was the purpose of priority queue in Dijkstra? It was to figure out the minimal of all of them. But if you store them in a queue data structure, they're already stored in the increasing fashion. They're already stored in the increasing fashion. If you carefully see first one, 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 then two, 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 then three, 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 then four, four, four will be stored. Why does this happen? Because everyone is increasing by a unit distance, a constant distance in Dijkstra. What, were, what was happening? If there was a node, it was going to other node by taking plus 4, sometimes plus 10, sometimes plus 15, sometimes plus 2. It is moody. It is taking different edge weights. Thereby, we did not know what was the distance. Thereby, we required the priority queue to figure out the minimal. Do we require a priority queue over here? The answer to that is absolutely not. If we just convert this into a queue data structure, it will still store everything in the increasing order. And we do not need a priority queue to figure out the minimal distance. Thereby, we will omit the additional logarithmic of n that is in question over here. We do not need the additional logarithmic of n which is in question here. So we have proved that this problem can be solved using Dijkstra's, but Dijkstra using Q. Why? Because we don't need to find the minimal distance because Q already stores everything in the increasing fashion. So let's take out the next guy, which is at a distance of one and the element is zero comma two. So where can zero comma two go? Can it go up? No. Can it go right? Yes, it can go right. So please take it and go to the right, which is zero comma three plus one distance. Updated distance will be two. Go and update the distance in the uh, distance cell and then put it into the queue. Can it go down? The answer to that is no. Why? Because it contains something as zero, which is not allowed. Can it go left? Yes. Let's try it. 
If you press to go to the left, it is 0, 0,1 with a distance of 2. But 0, 0,1 says in the distance array, I've already been reached with a distance 0. Why are you coming up to me? Don't need, no need. Please do not come up to me. He'll not come up to him. So apparently this is done. Next, get the next element, which is takes a distance of 1 at the cell 1, 1. Where is 1, 1? Let's figure out. Here is 1, 1. Can it go to the top? Yes. So it can go to the top by taking a plus 1 and it will reach something like a 0, 1, which will make it a distance of 2. Again, 0, 1 says, I've already reached with a distance 0. Do not come to me. He tries to go to the right, but it figures out on the right, it has a 0. So he tries to go to the down, which is 2, 1 with a distance of 2. So he updates it because it's better and takes 2, 1 into the queue. Now it tries to go to the left. On the left, it has 1, 0. On the left, it has 1, 0 with a distance of 2. So thereby updates 2 and puts it into the queue. Done. Same thing if you noticed. What did I tell you? Look at the pattern. Look at the pattern. 0, then 1s, then 2s, then 3s will come up because the increase in distance is pretty much constant over here. What's the next thing? It comes to 0, 0 with a distance of uh, 1, right? So where can 0, 0 go? It can go here. Sorry, it cannot go to the top. It can go here and here. It cannot go to the left. So it can only go to the right, which will make it again something like 0, 1 with a distance of 2, not to be considered. Can go down with 1, 0 with a distance of 2. But if you see, it's already 2. We have already reached it using a distance of 2. So we do not consider it. Because if you come via this, or if you come via this, it is pretty much the same. So we do not consider anyone and we will just erase it. Yes, we will just erase it. Next comes 0, 3. So I'm taking a distance of 2 to reach 0, 3. Where is 0, 3? Here. Can it go top? No. Can it go right? No. Can it go down? Yes. It can go down, which is 1, 3 and takes a distance of 3. 3, 1, 3. And please make sure you update in the cell as well. Can it go left? Can it go? Can it go left? It can try to go left 0, 2 with a distance of 3, but not to be considered. Why? Because it is already reachable at a distance of 1. So I can say this is done. I'll omit it. Next, I'll get the next guy, which is distance of 2, and the cell was 2, 1. Where is 2, 1? Let's see. 2, 1 is here. Can it go to the top? Yes. So it'll try to go to the top, which is 1, 1 with a distance of 3, because this will take another plus 1. So if you see 1, 1 is already reachable at a distance of 1. So this will not be considered. It will try to go to the right. It will try to go to the right with a plus 1 distance. And it will reach 2, 2 with a distance of 3. And it sees, yes, and it sees it is better than infinite. It is better than infinite. And also it sees that this is equivalent to the destination that you are looking for. This is equivalent to the destination you are looking for. So what it does is, it says, wait, stop it right now. Stop the algorithm right now and return distance 3, which is my answer, which is my answer. And this is how easily you can solve the shortest distance in binary maze problems. So before going into the code, you have to travel four directions. Over here, you do not have an adjacency list. So if you are standing at a row, comma, column, you have to travel upwards, because that's one of the adjacent nodes. You have to travel rightwards, that's one of the adjacent nodes. You have to travel bottom and you have to travel the left. So four adjacent nodes in four directions. So one of the ways is you can definitely write something like row minus one, comma, column separately. You can always write row, comma, column plus one separately. You can always write row plus one comma column separately and you can also write row comma column minus one separately. You can write each of them separately. But will you do that? You can do that. No one will tell you anything. But if you are in an interview, they will reject you. So the way to do this is very simple. You don't have adjacency list. So you create them. How do you create them? You look at this minus one plus zero. You look at this plus zero plus one. You look at this plus one plus zero. You look at this plus 0 minus 1. So put them in something like D row, which is delta row, until minus 1, 0, 1, 0. 
and delta column and tell them 0 plus 1 0 minus 1 so now if you iterate on this which is basically index you can take it as index 0 1 2 3 so if you iterate on the index 0 and you add minus 1 to the row and you add 0 to the column you get this guy if you iterate on the first and you add 0 to the row and you add plus 1 to the column you get this and the next if you have 1 you add 1 to the row then you get this if you add 0 to the column you get this so apparently you will get all your adjacent nodes if you just keep on adding them simultaneously to the row and column this is how we will be coding this up i've already taught this method a lot of times in this series it was just for people who are just randomly uh, landing up on this video via youtube search so guys i hope you have understood the entire algorithmic explanation now it's time to code it up so as usual i'll be coding the c plus plus on the right and you can figure out the exact similar java code on the left so we are given a grid uh, the source and the destination so do you require a priority queue no a queue will suffice so a queue with a pair of int and the pair of coordinates should do and i'll require a distance array as well so let's uh, declare a 2d distance array of the same size of the grid so the size of the grid is not given to you so what you can do is you can just find it yourself grid dot size and you can always say m equal to grid uh, zero dot size that's that is easy and over here what you can do is n vector of int and you can say something like m comma you need infinity so 29 is the best choice now something i know is the source destiny like the source is over here and the destination is over here so what i can say is distance of source dot first distance of source dot second because this is which is the row and column i can tell it as zero and i can say q can you please go and store something like zero comma and source dot first again and source dot second again so pretty simple similar to extra and now we will go on the queue till it is not empty we'll go on the queue till it is not empty what will i do i'll say auto of id equal to q dot front and i'll say q dot pop as well and now i'll figure out everything this can be said as id dot first row can be said as id dot second dot first because that is how i'm storing column can be said as uh, id dot second dot second perfect done now what did i require i have to travel to the uh, through the adjacent nodes so I require something like delta row, which is something like minus one, zero, one, comma, zero. Perfect. And I need the delta column, which is something like zero plus one, zero, minus one. Perfect. So this I've already explained. So go back and watch it. Uh, this I've already explained right before the uh, writing of code. So this is done. So I have to go through these indexes. So let's go through these indexes. Now I know the new row. Or I can say a new R is going to be row plus delta row change. And I know the new column is also going to be something like column plus DC of I. We know this, right? What do we need to check? We need to check the validity at first. That's the first thing that you'll do. So the validity is very simple. You say this, and it should always be lesser than this. And you say it should always be greater than equal to zero. And it should always be. You can probably put this into a function as well just to improve code readability this is something which you'll do what's the next thing that you'll do you'll always say that okay i have checked out for validity and now let's come back to dextra dextra stated like before dextra it has to be a one as well so what i'll do is i will just go and say is this a one or not so i'll go to the grid and say hey listen new r new column are you guys one if you are then let's check for the distance what is the distance previously it took this now it's going to take one is this lesser than to what you are currently taking if this is the case go ahead and say the distance to update themselves with one plus this that's a new distance and tell the queue to push one plus this for sure and to push the new row and the new column okay but wait, wait, wait. If this is my answer, what if this is my answer? So I'll say, okay, wait, what if the new row is equal to equal to 
the destination. So this is the destination. You can just copy paste destination dot first and and what if the new column is equal to the destination dot second. If that's the case, I can return. This is my answer because this is what will be my answer. And in case I scroll through, I traverse through the entire grid and I never find my answer. I never execute this line. That means I, I could never reach the destination, which will end up which will end up me uh, returning minus one because that is what they say. It's not possible return minus one. So before submitting this code, I will just write a small edge case. What if we are standing on the cell 